His friends aren't letting him recover alone. You're in the trenches with him, you know. How many are helping a Lexington music video producer shot last month? It's been almost a year since someone shot and killed a father of two when he was leaving for work. And it was a senseless crime. Tonight, friends and family are remembering him. Normally, volunteers from the Catholic Action Center and God's Net are looking for things to help people stay safe during the winter. But coming up, we'll tell you what they're asking the community for to help keep people safe this summer. This is WKYT News. Raising funds for a friend. You're watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Tonight, dozens are at a Lexington bar raising money for a man many musicians know well. Last month, police say three men jumped and shot local music video producer Coleman Saunders. Saunders has spent a lot of time recovering from his injuries. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is talking to his friends in our top story. Longtime friends of Coleman Saunders say his personality is bigger than life. They say if he's in a room full of people, he's not hard to pick out. The local music video producer was shot during a robbery in Lexington. Police say he had just taken a taxi to the corner of North Limestone and East 7th when he was jumped by three men back in June. He was in critical condition, but since has been recovering and is out of the hospital. Today, we're told he's in too much pain to come out, but family, friends, and strangers alike are making sure money is raised to help pay his medical expenses. Close to 10 bands will play throughout the day, including Sunday Best. Longtime friends of Saunders say this fundraiser is fitting. Music is what he loves, and friends say music has created an unwavering bond. I was in the military for five years, and honestly, the, the bond that you have there, I mean, when, when you play in a band with someone, it, I mean, it's like the same type of bond for me. I mean, you're, you're in the trenches with them, you know. Um, it's, it's fun, but it's not always fun. Um, so there's definitely a closeness there that's kind of unique outside of you know, just typical friendship. Austin City Saloon isn't typically open on Sundays, but they are today for this event, and they'll be open until 2 in the morning. They're taking donations at the door rather than a cover charge. In Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Friends say Saunders' medical bills right now run well into the six-digit figure. They've set up a fundraising page to help them out. We have a link to the page on our website, WKYT.com. Almost a year has passed since someone shot and killed a Clay County man on his way to work. Deputies say Trevor Dykes and his ex-girlfriend Ashley Lawson were involved in a custody dispute over their child. They say Thomas Miracle paid Roscoe Henson $5,000 to kill Dykes because of that custody dispute. Today, friends and family honored his memory at the London Dragway. What happened to my son, it should have never happened. It was a senseless crime. I mean, he should be here today. He should be enjoying this today. Thanks his ex-girlfriend Lawson, Miracle, and Henson have all been charged in connection to his death. The case is scheduled for review August 1st. The Wayne County coroner says one person drowned this weekend at Lake Cumberland. Deputy coroners are investigating. They're not releasing a lot of details at this time, but they do tell us they found the body early Saturday morning. And in Perry County, a young woman has died from injuries she got in a crash. Deputies say a silver Toyota sedan and blue Toyota SUV crashed yesterday on Kentucky Route 15. Emergency crews rushed two people to the hospital. We're told the driver of the sedan, 21-year-old Jamie Napier, died at Hazard ARH. We do not know how the juvenile in the SUV, who also went to the hospital, is doing tonight. Call it a break from the heat. Looks like our work week will start off a little cooler than what we've experienced this weekend. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is also looking at storm chances. And it'll be those storm chances that help cool us off consistently through most of the new work week. Now, we're still going to be plenty warm, mid and upper 80s, but we're going to try to back off from the 90s. And that's what most of us had out there today with triple digit heat index values. We've been watching some showers and storms north of Lexington as well, one that has been uh, across parts of Bourbon County and Nicholas County. County. It's starting to weaken considerably compared to what it was a little while ago. 90 degrees in Mount Sterling, 90 in Richmond. Here in Lexington, we're at 92 with the same thing in Frankfurt. A lot of heat. Now let's throw in the humidity. When you throw that in, this is what it feels like when you walk outside. So it feels more like 
99 here. It feels like 102 in Mount Sterling. Feels like 101 degrees in Frankfort. Certainly a lot of humidity and a lot of heat showing up out there with a few showers and thunderstorms. Here's that one I was talking about that we were viewing on our sky cam. You can see the uh, clouds towering. Weakened a lot. Just a little bit of lightning left there associated with it uh, across parts of Bourbon County, but the heavier rain starting to fall apart some. But we could run into more chances all week long. I will track them in the full forecast coming up. The heat and humidity can be deadly. Volunteers from the Catholic Action Center in Lexington are collecting items like water bottles to help keep people on the streets cool and safe this summer. WKYT's Mike Linden talked to volunteers about what else they need. The dog days of summer have arrived, and for volunteers with the Catholic Action Center, it's time to help. We do it in the wintertime when it's extreme cold. We do it in the summer when it's extreme hot. Burroughs is a volunteer with the Catholic Action Center. He says their supply of water bottles can't keep up with demand. If we have, you know, uh, cases of water, which a case has about 24, we'll pass them out in a matter of minutes. While volunteers are struggling to distribute water and sunscreen to people, they're also struggling with issues here at the Catholic Action Center. Melvin says that their ice machine stopped working nearly two weeks ago. Now it's still giving water, but when you try to get ice out of it, nothing happens. With a limited supply of water bottles and sunscreen, volunteers are concerned for the people in need who call the streets their home. It, with the heat, as much as we give out water and we give out Gatorade and have sunscreen, they're still in the elements. Ramsey says in the extreme heat of summer, everyone needs to lend a helping hand. That if folks see people on the side of the road and if they carry around some water bottles in their car, ask them if they want them. You may be saving a life. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. The center's greatest needs right now are bottled water, sports drinks, and sunscreen. The heat didn't stop Fayette County Public Schools families from enjoying their second annual family reunion. Employees met up at Whitaker Bank Ballpark before today's Lexington Legends game. WKYT's Sean Moody talked with the superintendent. The Fayette County School Superintendent Manny Cox said he wanted this day out here at the ballpark to kind of set the tone for the rest of the school year. This is a chance for people across the district who might not see each other any other time of the year to get together. School district employees and their families came out to Whitaker Bank Ballpark for their second annual family reunion. The kids' activities were free, and some of those refreshments came in pretty handy in that heat today. Superintendent Manny Cox spent time talking with people from across the district. Some met him for the first time. He said this day would set an important tone. And I often say that we have the best family in Fayette County, and we're going to prove that during the academic year, but that work begins today. Not employees, but family. And that's what separates Fayette County Public Schools from any other district uh, in the state and really national, is that we are family. And while some of the Fayette County Public Schools employees haven't been off all summer or are heading back here shortly, students aren't going back until August 10th. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. As soon as the Legends game ended, first responders hit the field for some friendly competition. They're participating in the 16th annual Lexington Police versus Lexington Fire softball game. The game started a few minutes ago. All first responders were able to attend today's games free of charge. The Pokemon craze has gone from phone screens to walls at Eastern Kentucky University. EKU sophomore Wiley Cottle has always loved Pokemon. Cottle says he's been drawing the characters around campus for a while and that someone from the marketing department at EKU saw one of his drawings and started a Pokemon EKU campaign. Chalk art's not really something you really see a whole lot of, so I think I've been bringing something a little new to campus and just around local areas, so everyone's been really loving it, especially on social media. I get this huge response, and, but yeah, everything's been positive so far. Cottle says he still needs to draw a few more Pokemon characters before his series is complete. Still to come on WKYT, more than 100 people were in our state's capital today, racing each other and the heat. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. 
A lot of heat, a lot of humidity, and they are together and loving one another right here across Kentucky today as we are running in the triple digits, in some cases with heat index values. That's what you're going to be exposed to when you walk outside. That's a smothersome heat that we have, and we certainly do have it. Feels like 99 here in Lexington, feels like 98 in Mount Sterling. We backed off there. But look at the triple digits. Frankfort, Covington, Moorhead, out to Ashland, into Prestonsburg, out across parts of eastern Kentucky, and Middlesboro. And this will vary by every few minutes. So it might feel a little bit worse here soon for you in some of these locations. We look ahead to tomorrow, and I think we have a good chance to do it again. But if you notice, we're finding some pockets where it's not quite as oppressive. The reason being is we run into some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow that will likely cool us off rather quickly. Watch what happens to some of these other really tough heat index values. They drop. Quickly, because the model's picking up on some showers and thunderstorms, and we will run into those chances tomorrow. We had a few out there today, tracking this particular area that is weakened quite a bit across uh, parts of Bourbon County, Nicholas County, Robertson County, all of it, and even over into Fleming County as well. Still holding on to some of that heavier rain you can see north of Paris here, and then off to the uh, northwest of Carlisle. It's almost been in that same location for a while. Dumped over an inch of rain in about a half an hour, so it's still going, too. Here's what we have in the big picture. Frontal boundary that's going to drop in, and it's going to increase our rain chances. It could also bring maybe even some severe weather as we're under a marginal risk across parts of northern and right into central Kentucky as well tomorrow with that front diving in. It could enhance those storm chances. So let's take you through the rest of the evening and overnight and into your Monday. Once we make the transition over into the afternoon and evening, Thunderstorms start showing up again. Better chance because we have a source of lift out there. That would be that front. But even at night, those storm chances will calm down, at least until we get into your Tuesday. We'll ramp those chances back up again as that front just kind of hangs out right over Kentucky. And that's going to be a thing with a daily storm threat from Tuesday through Thursday that I think we'll run into with the rounds of thunderstorms continuing around here. So with it hanging around, we'll get repeat thunderstorms. And we could also run into a localized flood threat in some locations. So that's another concern moving forward. So that's the reason we're going to take a bite out of the 90 degree heat. Now we're certainly going to be hot in between showers and thunderstorms, mid and upper 80s, around normal for this time of year. But it does look a whole lot better than having 90 <laughs> across the board, right? Well, and not one of those days on there shows anything but storm chances. Because you're going to have a daily threat across the board. Not everybody sees them every day, but we'll have a chance out there for some. They battled each other and the heat. The hot temperatures didn't keep bicyclists from racing in the Bluegrass State Games. More than 100 people participated. Today, WKYT's Mike Byer talked to the race director. Even with the scorching hot temperatures, many mountain bike riders still came out to participate in the Bluegrass State Games right here at Capitol View Park in Frankfurt. Over 100 racers of all ages came out. They didn't just battle each other as they battled temperatures near 100 degrees. There were several races from youth all the way up to expert. These youngsters biked nearly 10 miles, while the more experienced cyclists biked roughly 20 miles through the heat. The Bluegrass State Games offer more than 30 sports for people of all ages and skill levels. Each person who participates in an event gets points for the Kentucky Point Series. It's a chance for Central Kentucky to get a mountain bike race. Uh, Kentucky Point Series is part of the Point Series, so there's races throughout some of uh, Central and Western Kentucky, Northern Kentucky. And this is our contribution to the Central Kentucky race. Due to the extreme temperatures, race organizers say their main goal is to make sure the cyclists are drinking plenty of water. In Frankfurt, Mike Byer, WKYT. The Bluegrass State Games are the largest of any amateur sporting event in the state, and it continues to be one of the longest running events of its kind in the nation. Lee Kate's in next with sports. Can you imagine being part of the Bluegrass State Games in this heat? Yeah, it was hot out there today. So hot, in fact, the legends had the fire department on hand for a wild one out of Whitaker Bank Ballpark. And the kid, Ken Griffey Jr., takes his place among the greatest to ever play the game of baseball. That's next in sports. King Griffey Sr. once told his son, you're only a number one draft pick for one year. 
Well, his son lived up to those lofty expectations, and today Ken Griffey Jr. became the first number one draft pick to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Junior played in 22 big league seasons with the Mariners, Reds, and White Sox. A 13-time All-Star selection, 10-time Gold Glove Award winner with 630 home runs, and who could forget that swing? He often made the game of baseball look easy. Just because I made it look easy doesn't mean that it was. And you don't work hard and become a Hall of Famer by not working in, working day in and day out. I want to thank my family, my friends, the fans, the Reds, the White Sox, and the Mariners for making this kid dream come true. And the kid was selected on a record 99.32% of ballots cast, an affirmation of sorts for his clean performance during baseball steroids era. He goes into the hall with Mets catcher Mike Piazza. Reds looking for a fourth straight win today, hosting the Diamondbacks. First inning, Cincinnati down 1-0, two on for Adam Duvall. He singles off Zach Godley, two runs come in to score, and the Reds would take a 2-1 lead. In the fifth inning, game now tied at five. Paul Goldschmidt takes Brandon Finnegan up and over the wall and left. Diamondbacks retake the lead now six to five. Go to the ninth inning now nine to five Arizona. Reds trying to get a few back here. Jay Bruce smashes a three run home run. Reds were down by one, but Arizona gets the win nine to eight. The Lexington Fire Department rappelled down from their bucket trucks to deliver the game ball for today's Legends game. And the Legends offense was on fire. Tied at seven in the eighth inning. Michael Hill has the bases loaded and with one swing of the bat, he unloads them. A grand slam to give Lexington an 11 to seven lead, but Columbia would tie the game at 11 in the ninth inning when Travis Mazes goes high and deep and gone. That is a walk off home run. 23 runs scored at the ballpark today. The Lexington Legends had 12 of them to pick up the 12 to 11 win. We are now weeks away from the start of the high school football season and we continue our countdown of 27 teams in 27 days. Dunbar High School is no stranger to coaching changes and that's once again the case as they prepare for the new season. There's a new top dog at Dunbar this season and his name is Chris Mullins. The Bulldogs new head coach spent the last five seasons as the head coach at Greenup County but jumped at the chance to come to Lexington after Paul Range retired last spring. I felt like that this was a school that kind of underperformed with the potential that they had. And it was always a school when I looked, you know, in the offseason at open jobs uh, to see if that job was open. And Coach Mullins has made a positive impression on his team since his introductory press conference. As soon as we saw him at that press conference, you would think like he's going to be all dressed up, he's going to be serious, he's going to tell everyone what they want to hear. No, he brings the enthusiasm. He's got the heart for it. I was actually amazed by what I saw. I, I wanted this coach. Dunbar will look a little different on the field. No longer a team relying on the run. The Bulldogs will try to utilize more playmakers on offense. We, when we line up in the spread and you, and you look at your wide receivers and you've got a kid like Isaiah Yeast and his brother Markel and you've got Dontell Brown and you've got Trey Homer lined up as your four wide receivers. Uh, that's got to stress out of defense. The quarterback is returning junior Gavin Bug, who missed most of last season with concussion issues, something Coach Mullins is very aware of. But we made a few adjustments on the way that we were pass protecting to try and give him some more space and have him feel a little bit more comfortable in the pocket. And on defense, Mullins is looking for guys that don't mind mixing it up and playing a little nasty. Um, it's just a choice. You, know, you have to choose whether you want to be that type of player or not. Um, and when I find, you know, 11 or 15 or how many guys want to make that choice, then those are the guys we're going to go with. Dunbar will kick off its season against state runner-up Lafayette on August the 26th. And want to say congrats to the Clay County Senior League girls softball team. They beat Beardstown, Illinois today to advance the Senior League World Series, which is next week in Delaware. Great for them. We'll be right back with the final check of weather. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $15 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $422 million. 
one thing we're going to try to do in our seven-day forecast is keep the numbers lower <laughs> as we go through the next few days. What will happen is we do have one 90-degree day chance, and that's going to be tomorrow out ahead of a cold front. But beyond that, we're going to get more seasonable around here with mid and upper 80s. Now, that's very uncomfortable, I know, but there's a good chance of storms each day. So what that means is a lot of us will have to deal with the heat the whole day. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got a 68 on there. Yeah, too bad. Not, yeah, Hope you'll join us right back here at 11 o'clock tonight. Thank you.